All right. Hello, everyone. It's lovely to see everybody coming into the room already. We'll just kind of give a couple minutes for um, everybody to log in. So if you need a glass of water, um, now is a perfect time to do that before we get started. Um, and we'll get started in just a minute here. Uh, while you come in though, why don't you let us know where you're logging into the webinar from um, in the chat panel um, and uh, what grades you teach if you're teaching or what your role is at your district um, in the chat panel. So you can just click chat and then let us know. And we've got another minute here. We've still got a lot of people rolling into the webinar, so we'll give them one more. So we've got a K to nine. Welcome everybody. And um, when you are chatting, a good tip um, for you guys is um, if you want everybody to see what you're saying, then to share it with not just all panelists, because the panelist is us here as the presenters, but to share it with all panelists and attendees so that everybody can see what you're saying. Welcome, Melissa. It's wonderful from Saskatchewan. Thanks for joining us um, and Lou from Ohio wonderful to see you here today all right so some housekeeping things before we get started we are going to be recording today's webinar in fact it's already recording which is great because that means that you're going to automatically receive a recording in your inbox um, anybody who registers will receive that recording uh, we do have the chat panel there for you to um, chat with your colleagues and your peers as the webinar goes um, on. Let us know as you come in where you're from, what grades you teach, or what your role is in your district. We'd love to hear from you. Um, if you have any questions though, please feel free to add those to the Q&A panel. That will help us kind of filter through those questions when it comes to the Q&A portion of the webinar um, so that we can easily answer them and so that we make sure that we don't miss any questions. All right, Star, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay. All right. So Here. thanks for joining us today in our webinar, Digital Portfolios, Teaching Students to Own Their Progress. I'm very excited to introduce you to our panel here. Um, so we've got a few of us here. My name is Siobhan. Um, I'm the community manager here at FreshGrade. Uh, we've got Star Stackstein with us as well, who's a nationally board certified teacher, author, and educational consultant um, from New York City. And then we've got a couple other FreshGrade team members. We've got Daryl Johnston there and Dave um, Haight there and we'll be uh, all joining in on the webinar answering your questions as we kind of go through. Um, to start though I am going to just pass it over to Star and I'm going to recommend that David and myself and Daryl hide our cameras while you go ahead and present Star. So you can just mm -hmm. turn off your camera while you go ahead and take it away. Thanks Star. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. So just a little background about me. Um, I'm all about portfolios. And in my school that I was at for nine years in New York City, we had a portfolio based school. And the whole premise behind it was that students really have this authentic opportunity to see their own progress. And when we're thinking about helping students become more reflective learners and more thoughtful learners, um, when they are tracking their progress over time, they're better able to set goals, they're better able to reflect, they're better able to really think about themselves as learners. So just to give a few more reasons, it does promote reflection, it deepens transfer of knowledge, it encourages connections between past, present, and future learning. So if in your school, you are not only using it in your classroom, but there's an expectation that students are collecting portfolios in all of their classes, and if they're doing it digitally, it could easily be tracked and passed along to the next teachers who students encounter, particularly in elementary school, but even through high school, which is where I was working with students. I taught mostly nine through 12 and mostly 12 AP and journalism. So it's really important when you're gonna be using a portfolio in your class 
to have a process in place that students really understand. And part of that is thinking about what I like to call the five, the five step process for this, um, the collection of student work, the selection of student work, I have a typo there in my slide, reflection on student work and then connections to other learnings as well as giving them opportunities to talk about their learning. And I'm gonna just go into a little bit more depth about each of those steps now. So when we're, when we're in the collection mode, this is when kids have the opportunity to take all the learning that they're doing and keep it in one space. So if your students are anything like my students were, a lot of times they threw things out after grades were on them or they just had a really hard time managing their work. And in my early days, we were actually using a paper folder system where the collection was happening in class and they were leaving their work in folders in the back of the room in crates. And when we moved to digital and started using like Google um, educational suite, we were able to just have kids start making folders where they just started collecting everything. Now the next part of the process is the selection part of the process. And this could be done a number of different ways. The selection could either be we want them to show their best work. And so they're picking the stuff they feel is best. Um, sometimes in my old school there, we required them to choose one of the summative projects. Sometimes we asked them to choose something that was a process assignment um, or if students are inclined, they could choose things that they're proud of or things that they feel show the most growth. But that's really for you to decide with your students um, what the purpose of this portfolio is going to be. Are they going to be using these things to, um, for a particular purpose? Now, once they've made their selections is really where the reflection comes in because um, as somebody who would be viewing their portfolio as they're looking through their body of work, we would want to know why they made the selections that they made. And we want to make sure that they can really articulate those things. And when they're articulating it, they might talk about the standards that the assignment is addressing. They might talk about the process um, for making the work that they did and um, where they struggled and how they grew. Um, they might actually show two assignments back to back that are focusing on the same standards and really show how um, in the earlier part of the process to the later part of the process, they feel like they've grown and they've been able to see that specifically. Now, the next part is connection, and this is a, a much bigger piece. Um, when, when students are doing learning in lots of classes and we're using portfolio systems school-wide and not just in one classroom, we not only want them to be able to transfer the learning that's happening from unit to unit, skill to skill, content piece to content, but we want them to start seeing the connections between all the classes that they're in. Um, how the skills in science connect to the skills in math, how social studies and English and language um, all kind of connect together. And then there are those group assignments that are all about collaboration and the things we learn in different spaces that could then transfer to what their lives are gonna look like after. Now, the important part of using these systems is that it really does make learning visible when we're telling students or they're just tracking grades instead of actually looking at their work. Students don't necessarily understand um, what progress has happened, especially if we start from like beginning of the year work to end of the year work, or if we're looking on a much bigger scale. Um, in my school district, what we used to do in my building was we had these exit portfolio conferences where students had to then go through their, their um, portfolio from the four years they were in high school. And during that time, they had to select the work that aligned with what was going on for their future learning, um, if they knew what they were gonna be studying in college, so that the purpose of these was to speak to a panel about their actual learning, looking at what they did in ninth grade and 10th grade and 11th grade 
and 12th grade and really starting to make the connections of how they've grown as a learner. And there's nothing more powerful to do that than actually looking at your work. And it starts with simple stuff like the length of the assignments that they've been able to develop. It could also be the, you know, the complexity of the style of the writing that they're doing. And I'm speaking from an English lens as an English teacher, thinking about how they are as readers, um, how they interact as presenters. Um, we were a journalism school, so they had a lot of media projects that could be a part of this as well. And thinking about how well they were able to manipulate the media as they went through. I'm gonna go back for a sec. So as, as they were doing these things, I'm thinking about one student in particular, and they could make these presentations in a number of different ways. As they were selecting, collecting, reflecting, and connecting as they went, um, we really wanted them to think about the story of their learner, um, of their learning. And in doing so, they really gave the opportunity to spread, spread things out over time. And what was always miraculous to me was when students could really dial in on their learning and as they were doing those reflections, thinking about the standards and the progression, um, what they were proficient at, what they were mastering and how they could tell. Going back to the pieces themselves, highlighting things so that those reflections were super deep. And then when they brought the presentation to the panel, they could talk about their learning, they could show the actual um, pieces that they had selected, and then they were also able to answer questions that may not have been visible in why they made the selections that they did and, um, and how it aligned with what they had hoped their future learning would be. Okay, so I'm gonna stop talking for a little bit and see if you guys have any questions. And Siobhan, do you, um, I can't see the chat right now, so um, when I'm sharing the screen, so should I stop sharing the screen? Do you want to take it over or do we want to just? You are totally fine. I will let you know if any questions come in and what those questions are um, as they come in, because I can see everything. So thank you so much, Star. Um, and I'll invite uh, Daryl and David to come back on and share their cameras and participate in this section um, as well. Uh, hello, Daryl. Welcome back. Um, and David, there's David. Hi, David. Um, so thank you for coming back with us. So Star, can you um, give an example of an activity from start to end that you did with your students um, where, they, where they went through this process? Sure. So basically, at the end of each marking period, we really had an opportunity to have a body of work for students to pull from. And as an AP English teacher, the, the whole premise of what was going on, they were in the middle of doing lots of projects all the time. And the way the class was set up was we did our learning in groups. So there was a lot of, it was a collaborative structure. And then what they learned in their groups needed to be applied to individual assignments. And basically those individual assignments were the things that would probably go into their portfolios. Although the group work could be evidence of how they were able to get to where they were in their mastery process. And once they made a selection, like if there were five or six projects over the course of a term and they're going through their work and they're sitting in class, um, for my younger students, we had scaffolded plans where they were going through a Google form to make sure that they had covered all the standards that they needed to cover. So sometimes I would give them checklists where they knew, okay, I need to find an assignment that shows my evidence of learning um, for this particular standard, whether it was an argument paper or it was an understanding of content for reading or it was an evidence of their ability to publicly speak or whatever we were working on that term. Yeah. And then they had to make sure that the work exemplified that particular standard. So that was another thing too in their selection process. Like I want to show a variety of my learning, not just one area that I was always good at that I'm going to continue to show growth in, but really think more in terms of this was an area I was weak in and look at where I started at, at the beginning of this term. And now 
I was able, like, if I, if we talk about evidence, for example, and analyzing evidence to support a claim, which is a big one everywhere. And maybe in the beginning, students were, um, weren't even collecting and finding really excellent evidence to support the learning in their space. So if in their first essay, they're showing me like the feedback that they got said that the evidence wasn't aligning with their claim or they weren't developing their ideas deeply enough or they weren't analyzing what they had done well enough, then the, the subsequent pieces they'd be looking at were how well they were able to develop that over time. Yeah. And I would have them highlight in class the areas of their different pieces where that growth was actually happening. And then at the end of that process, they would do another re reflective piece about um, how the learning was happening and where the evidence of that was happening inside of their own work. And then that would be one thing that would go into their finished portfolio. Nice. And we've got a question um, here. For middle schoolers, is it better to have them save all the steps of their learning um, or to just upload the final end piece, uh, assuming that it's a digital um, space that you're doing it in, like fresh grade? So it's always, I, I, I'm inclined to always say save it all. Um, just because that formative process, there's so much that happens inside of it. And even if the final polished piece is, you know, what they're seeing and what they think is going to be graded at the end of it all, the learning is happening in the mess that leads up to it. So I like that. The mess of it all, right? The the mess. When we think about digital portfolios, which is what we're talking about today, um, I think that there's a perception that they need to be perfect when, when we think about them, like a, like a scrapbook um, that, that shows those perfect moments. But learning is so messy. And so to show all that growth, um, you do need to capture those, those extra moments as well. So that's a, that's a good one. I love that the learning is messy piece. Mm -hmm. So start, talk to me a bit about um, starting with this, because obviously, like you've been doing this for a long time. Um, you've kind of developed a process. What was it like getting started with digital portfolios and that four step process? Well, to be honest with you, the digital portfolios are so much nicer, in my opinion, than paper ones, because when you have a limited amount of space in your classroom and you have 34 students and then you have crates for all the classes that you have as they're coming through and you have to have a table in the back of the room to kind of house where everything is going to be it, it takes up a lot of space to do it um in in real paper sort of form um where they're collecting it in folders and, and then the bigger problem with that too is if they're taking those folders home at any point there's just so much that could be lost um and, and there's no blame in that. I just think things are easily misplaced sometimes when they're physical. When you have it digitally anywhere, whether it's in FreshGrade, Google, or whatever system folks are using, it's hard to lose it because usually there's some kind of fail safe in place where even if you delete it, it's in a trash bin that you can pull out later and kind of bring back restored, up again. Yeah. So that, that restored piece is really nice. Um, I think the first thing that I started doing with my students when we were in this collection mode was really teaching them how to be smart about how they saved their files, how they labeled their files. I mean, it, I guess as adults, we take it for granted that that's stuff we do when we make a new document, we try to label it with something specific so that when we want to find it again later, it's super easy to find, although... I don't know, I'm still searching my files sometimes and six or seven things come up with the same <laughs> file name and it's not what I'm looking for. And then when I finally do find it and I look at the title, I'm like, well, that makes sense. I just didn't think to use that as <laughs> a search value. It's, I can totally relate to that. I am one of those messy file people. Um, and what I will say is like, you also, as, as a teacher, you want the files to be easy to understand as well. So like I had a format where it was the title of the project or the assignment underscore in their last name. Yeah. And it, so that I knew that when I was looking at my inbox that whose I was looking at when I pulled it up and what assignment it was. Um, I like their documents to have all the drafts in it instead of having multiple drafts. 
Um, so it's, it was a lot easier too for them to cut and paste and restart, but also in, if they're doing their work in Google, then the revision history is another really great sort of yeah. feature where if I wanted to go back to the beginning, I could easily scroll down to the revision history and start digging through the document um, to make those choices. So and you get to see their process of it all. Through, exactly. Through that as well. And I think one, one of the big things is we're going to be able to show you how we've really solved a lot of that problem. That's the awesome. Ability for people to tag. Yeah. And so um, that's, that's part of, we've been listening obviously to clients for a while. And one of the things they said was it needs to be much easier, not just for the teachers, but also for the parents to be able to, to find things that they're looking for, maybe, you know, emotional learning or something like that. And so you can tag this, the, uh, you know, the material that way and people can find it. And so uh, we'll be able to show that. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Well, let's go ahead. That's a good segue, Daryl, to um, talk about the solution of FreshGrade. Um, Star, I'm going to have you stop sharing your screen and I'm going to take over the share okay. um, uh, really quickly. And then we'll go like this, share, and we'll get to the right screen. Um, and so we'll talk about um, FreshGrade next um, as an option for you guys to kind of do what Star talked about. And Star and David and Daryl, please feel free to chime in at any point um, during this portion. Or um, if you have any questions, please do add those to the Q&A panel there. Um, we'd be happy to um, stop and answer those questions as, as we go along here. Um, so how do you implement this four-step process that Star was talking about in an easy way, one easy? Um, it has to save you time. It can't be something that's super time consuming, something that you can easily implement and that your students can take um, and run with as well. So I'm going to introduce you to FreshGrade Next, um, where you can instantly share student work. You can see the richness of every student's journey, um, and it's one tool to drive them all. So you're going to have your lesson planner, your portfolio, your communication system, and your gradebook all in one happy platform. Um, really trying to solve this question for you guys. Um, Star, I'm sure that you can relate to this, is um, coming home to the stacks and stacks and stacks of paper. Um, and this looks like a very neat pile of paper, but the crunched up paper, the messy papers, the um, the fingerprinted papers um, coming home and just having this huge stack of papers. So we're going to talk about how um, we can solve the problem of, of this for you and the time consuming um, and changing the, the grading of the papers and sitting there with this huge stack of papers to actually engaging with your students about the learning. So uh, FreshGrade, what is it? It's a learning network where you can assess, you can design, you can gather and organize, and you can share um, those learning. And we'll take a look at each of these pieces. So we're going to take a look at the lesson planner where you can um, have that quick align to standards and frameworks and assessment, where it's teacher-centered um, and you've got flexible authority control. Um, where you can craft a shared journey with your students. Um, so this is an example, and, and these are just screenshots, but I'm actually going to take you into the platform as well um, so that we can look at how simple and easy it is for you to start by creating that lesson um, and then moving into the portfolio piece where your students are going to um, they're going to drive that learning process. They're going to um, talk. They're going to share their learning. They're going to reflect on their learning. They're going to connect with you on their learning, uh, like Star uh, talked about, um, through diverse media um, uh, avenues as well. Um, letting the students put their best foot forward and showing that mess of, of the learning um, right in one place um, where you're going to have that communication system and you're going to engage the parents and the families um, in that learning process. You're going to be able to talk to your students about what's going on um, and that uh, everybody gets involved in this. So whether that's the teacher, whether that's a support teacher, whether that's the administrator, you as the principal, um, you guys can all be a part of this shared learning journey with the students. Um, and then uh, building that strong community together. 
uh, as well as your grade book, which we're super excited about our um, grade book. And I'm really looking forward to showing you um, it because it is um, super powerful uh, with your flexible assessment. So whether you're a standards-based teacher or a score-based teacher, or you want to use anecdotal note or a combination of them, um, it's completely flexible for you to assess the way that you want to um, assess. And it's an evidence-driven grade book. And I really like this, uh, this screenshot here because it shows you how powerful it is. Your grade book is actually coming to life. So no longer is it just, you know, the marks and the scores, you can actually click on cells and bring that evidence of learning to life um, right from that place. Uh, so, uh, and guide the students to access through whatever assessment tool um, you feel um, that you want to. So, let's stop looking at slides and we'll head over to the platform and I'll take you through that process showing you how simple and easy it is for you and your students to implement um, and then I'll actually even um, show you a completed portfolio uh, when we're done so I'll take you through my daughter's um, portfolio because I'm very lucky um, as a fresh grader to have a student who um, her teacher has used fresh grade um, and and I can show you what that completed um, process looks like for her. We'll take a look at her last year portfolio. All right, so this is Fresh Grade Next. I'm so excited to introduce you to it. Um, I'm in my My Feed here where I can see anything that's going on. You can see that I can scroll through um, and I can kind of see all the learning, the mess of it all for all of my classes. Um, so if I have more than one class, it's gonna pull into this feed. Um, or I can scroll down and I can look at individual classes as well. Um, and see what's going on with those individual classes. Um, we're gonna start with that lesson planning piece. We all, we all do it, we start there, we plan our lessons, we share our lessons. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that um, looks like. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and click new here and I'm gonna create an activity for my students. Um, so the activity that we're going to do today, I'm gonna pull it up here so that I can quickly copy and paste um, so that you guys can see. Uh, what it looks like is going to be a storyboard activity. So I'm going to go story uh, board activity and I'm going to give a description. So this is where I can give my instructions to my students. What's expected of them, what we're going to be working on, um, and, and how they're going to get there. So um, I just put in a great story, starts with a great idea. As part of our story writing unit, we will be creating storyboards to help formulate great ideas and to create a foundation to the stories you'll be expected to create later in the unit. Um, uh, your storyboard must include six complete scenes and one to two descriptor uh, sentences per per scene. Uh, please upload your completed storyboard to this activity within your FreshGrade account. Um, and then I added my rubric description there for me as well. I'm going to assign my due date. So let's go ahead and have it do the 20th there. Um, I can even add a teacher note. So um, I can add this now as I'm creating the activity, a reminder to myself, something that um, I need to note when I created it, or maybe at the end of the activity, I come in and I, you know, I'm reflecting on how um, well the students did. I can come in and I can add a teacher note so that next year, when I do the same activity, I can come back to this activity and I can look at those notes and I can reflect on what happened. Um, I'm going to attach files so I can use my device or my camera, so grabbing a file that I already have or um, using my camera and taking a picture. I'm just going to go ahead and go in and we're going to go to my desktop and my class photos and we're going to look for my storyboard. So what I'm going to attach here is I'm going to attach an exemplar storyboard um, for my students and I'm going to add one more on my device and I'm going to uh, and I should have done that easier. I'll show you how to do it storyboard, uh, so exemplar and a blank storyboard for my students, there we go. So there's my exemplar and there's my blank storyboard and I'm going to go ahead and attach those. Now those files are there. My students know exactly what's expected of them as the exemplar is there for them and they can access the file to get started on their blank storyboard. Um, so that's there for them as well. If I wanted to, I could even add a link to a Google Doc 
um, here. So maybe that storyboard is in uh, my Google Drive and so I can just add the link for my students to get started there as well. I can then go in and I can attach my um, subjects. Uh, typically I would have English. I'm surprised I don't have that in the account, but just pretend that I had the subject um, English set up for this account um, and that that was that. We'll just pretend for today's sake. Um, I can choose my assessment criteria. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add in um, what, I, what I want to assess my students on. So I'm using a standardized uh, based gradebook here um, for my students. So I'm going to assess per standard. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and add my proficiency scale, which is a scale that I set up for this class. Um, and then I can even attach other um, standards if I wanted to. So you're going to see that they're going to pull up here automatically for me. Um, and then if I had attached additional scales, I would be able to choose between those scales. So allowing me to assess multiple standards per activity and even use different assessment criteria per standard, which is super cool and um, very unique, something that uh, isn't out there um, on the market yet to allow you to do that and uh, do it all in one happy place. Now, what Daryl mentioned earlier um, is that tagging and that filtering and the labeling piece. Yeah. So I can go ahead and come in here and choose a label um, and attach that to my students. So let's go ahead and go literacy. Um, but you can see that I've got my social emotional learning here as well, or special events, um, competencies. Um, so let's say we want to work on. Um, critical thinking for this one. And then I can even attach additional standards if I want to document additional standards, um, but I'm not necessarily going to assess those standards here. Uh, so super flexible for you. And the final couple pieces to building my lesson here is I can attach my students. Um, and what I like about this piece is I can clear all my students out. I can select all um, or I can choose just a group of students. So for your kids on IEPs um, or that you need to really differentiate the instruction for, you can create individualized activities for those students. Um, and because fresh grade is that closed loop, um, it's you, it's the student, it's their family, it's the administrator um, that, that's in this um, circle of communication together, um, you're keeping that private. So they're not going to know that anything is differentiated for them because it's their space. They're not going to be seeing their peers or comparing to their peers um, in this space. I'm going to go ahead and select all and attach them here. And then the final step is going to be my visibility settings. So visibility settings allow you to choose who sees this activity and when they see it. Um, so teachers, students, parents, only teachers, if I want to keep this to myself for now and I don't necessarily want my students to see it, um, I can keep it to myself, teachers and parents, uh, teachers and students, or only you. Uh, so when thinking about teachers and parents, um, our IEP situation is a good example of that. If you've got a kid on an IEP, and you're doing an activity um, that is IEP related and um, that you don't necessarily want them to see, uh, that you want that communication piece to stick between you um, and the parents, you can just click on teachers and parents and keep that conversation between you and the parents only. Um, I'm going to go ahead and we'll allow everybody to come into this journey together and I'm going to publish it. And what that does is that automatically sends that out to my students um, and their parents so that they can get started on the work. And so let's, as that loads there, I'll go ahead and pop over to my student account. So this is um, my, yeah. Can I just really cut? So yeah. one thing I want to make clear for everyone is it took longer for Siobhan to explain that than it does for you to cut and paste your lesson plans into a fresh grade. Um, the reality is I'm hearing that you know, it only takes minutes because if you've been teaching the same course for years, you have all those uh, lesson plans ready. So it's so easy for you just to cut and paste them in there. And, uh, and so um, it, it doesn't take very much time at all. Yeah, it was super, uh, it took me a few minutes to explain it, but imagine if you weren't talking all the way through that, uh, <laughs> you could uh, quickly and easily um, upload it. And amazingly, I am on Anita's portfolio here and 
already we're instantly seeing um, the activity there for her. So she can come in here, she sees the exemplar, she can download it, she can take a look um, at the storyboard or the exemplar, know exactly what's expected of her and get started on that work. Um, and then she can upload it um, as she goes through the process. So um, what she could do here, she could add a submission um, so whether that's a file or a, a description, depending on the assignment that you're working on. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll go my device, but um, she could take the camera and hold up her storyboard and take a picture of it um, as well. Uh, they're quickly capturing that. So let's go desktop, uh, class photos, and we'll just use our exemplar as a, um, for our image today. So you can see what that looks like and okay. And then she's going to reflect on her work here. Um, I have completed uh, my storyboard and she's going to give some insights and thoughts around um, that process right here in the description um, place and she's going to publish that. And what's going to happen there is it's going to automatically go out to teacher and parent um, and they're going to be, you're going to be able to see exactly what's going on. So let's pop back to um, the teacher screen and we're going to go into the grade book. Uh, we'll take a look at exact that activity there um, by uh, Anita and I can filter down in my gradebook even. So um, whether I want to filter by student, I want to filter by date, um, or I want to filter by additional um, standards that we've got going. So let's go ahead and go date just to show you an example of what this looks like. Um, so we're gonna start here and let's filter to there. Uh, due date and then we'll filter down and it'll filter down to all of my activities um, showing in that date range for me um, and you'll see that I've got my standards there and so there's my storyboard there's Miss Anita um, and you can actually click on this uh, activity here and I can see that she's uploaded a file and now I'm actually seeing her um, her work completed, uploaded right in my grade book. So whether I'm in my grade book, I'm in my my feed, I can see this amazing work come to life. I can um, assess the student uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Um, and when I do that, I'm keeping this assessment to myself right now, um, but I can choose to share that out at any point. So I'm going to go ahead and share that out um, with her her parents there um, and, and her so she knows exactly um, what was assessed and we'll take a look we'll give it a quick refresh um, so we pop that in and now it's immediately um, assessed and she can see exactly how she's doing. So I assessed this standard and she can see that she's extending on it. Not only can she see that she's extending on it, but the parents can see exactly what she's working on, track those standards um, and see, uh, see where she's at. So there's the storyboard um, from the parent view. I'll make it a little bit bigger for you guys. I'm a little zoomed out. Um, so I can see, as the parent, I can see the activity, what my, what my child's working on. I can also see the exemplar, I can see the blank storyboard, and I can see um, the mess of it all, and I can have a conversation with my child. So, Anita, um, this is great work. Um, I know that you worked very hard on it at home. Keep up, keep it up and send that out. And now I'm having a conversation with my child and her teacher um, about the learning. So that parent piece, when your child comes home um, from school and they sit at the table and, and you, you get that, that response that, uh, what'd you do today, uh, Anita? And Anita uh, looks at you and goes, uh, I don't know, or, stuff or um, food, nothing. right? Or nothing. nothing. Uh, My son says he learns nothing at school. <laughs> nothing, <laughs> right? Uh, nothing. As the parent, you can now exactly see what's going on. So Anita can come in here and say, 
Hi, Mom. Thanks. I am super proud of this work. And we're engaging the family um, in this conversation. We're making the learning visible and putting the ownership on our students to capture their learning um, in this safe place. Now, I want to take, um, I see a couple questions in there. Um, and and does it have a calendar? I saw that question come in. It doesn't have a calendar. It's something that we're looking at for sure, um, but parents and students can sort and filter the work um, as well. So um, just like the teacher had that sorting and filtering capabilities, um, parents and students can also do that. So they can filter by date like I did, um, or they can filter by all of these amazing um, filter pieces. So uh, maybe they want to filter down by their social emotional learning um, and and figure out what's going on there or they want to filter down by um, reflection like this is my best work I'm making progress um, I need help because students can also label and tag um, their work in fresh grade um, making it easy for everybody to see exactly what's going on um, and parents have the same capability so here's my parents um, and you can see that I can filter down um, and if I had additional students I might I even be able to see all of my students there. So I've just got one child in my parent account, but say I have two kids, um, I would be able to see both of my kids' portfolios um, for their classes um, in individual portfolios as a parent, or I can see my feed, which is going to pull in all of my kids in one place where I can quickly see what's going on um, in each of their um, classes and, and connect with them um, in an easy to digest way for parents. Um, so Should let's, we? yeah. So one thing I hear all the time is, uh, you know, about how difficult it will be for the students to save their information. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to really quickly talk about, um, you know, how that happens. So a lot of the elementary schools that we deal with, they'll have a, a capture zone, a place where they'll have one single device. And even the really young students, kindergarten, grade one, they'll learn to take their their picture over. They're really proud to share with their parents anyway. Yeah. They'll learn to take it over to that area take a picture of it, upload it into their portfolio, and now the parents can comment on it and, uh, and it's there permanently. Yeah, that's uh, totally valid. Um, we hear a lot of Fresh Grade Fridays is a thing. Oh, yeah. Um, where the kids go in and they fresh grade on Fridays, uh, where they go to their documentation stations if they only have one device in the class, or an iPad part comes in, or they go to the computer lab, because as you noticed, you can actually take photos right from a computer. You don't need that mobile device um, to capture those photos. Uh, so um, they, they do it really easily, uh, whether it's a kindergarten class, because uh, we all know that those kindergartners know how to use a device. Um, my two-year-old knows how to use a device. Um, so by the time they're getting into kindergarten, they are so proficient, they are more than capable of capturing their learning. Um, all the way to our high schoolers, who their devices are their life. Um, they have them in their hands almost all the time. Um, so that accessibility piece for them is really easy. Um, but I do want to show with you, share with you guys um, a completed portfolio. So this is um, the older version of FreshGrade because we just switched over to FreshGrade Next this year. Um, but I want to show you what a completed portfolio looks like from the parent side. Um, so this is my beautiful little Gabby girl. Um, she was in grade one last year. Um, and I am super um, happy that we have um, an amazing portfolio to share with you. But what you can see here um, is that I I've got a documentation of her learning throughout um, over time. So actually, um, what is here is I have her kindergarten portfolio and I have her grade one portfolio and hopefully I'll have her grade two portfolio soon. Um, uh, and as in grade one, her teacher um, uploaded uh, artifacts of learning as the process went on. Um, but you'll see there's a huge jump, right? So as she went through, we've got, you know, a couple in March, some in February, one in April, a lot at June because that was the end of the year. And so she was doing a lot of uploading at the end of the year. This doesn't have to be a daily thing. Um, this, this is something um, that 
the students can upload and capture um, over time. It's not an everyday um, thing that they need to be in and, and doing. Um, and as a parent, I'm so used to getting the once a year or twice a year information. So having a once a month information is uh, blowing my mind because I have so much more insights into what's going on um, in her classroom um, than I would have ever had before. Because not only am I getting that information, but I'm seeing videos. So um, here's, I'm gonna stop the share really quick and then I'll share it again, I promise. Um, but I think I just uh, need to make sure that I click the video so that you can hear it. Um, share. Okay, so there she is. Um, stop share. Try again, share and video. That's what you want. All right, so there she is and we'll play the video here um, so that I can see exactly what she was learning um, over time. Bears, bears are big. Outs, keep going. Outs, they, Have. Now, I hope you guys heard that star. Did you hear that on your side there? Yeah. So this was the end of the year for her. But as I scroll back, here's her reading passage end of term two. Um, so I not only got a glimpse of how she was doing, um, I got a glimpse of how she was doing over the year. Um, through As the time went on, I could see exactly how she was progressing. Um, and I could have a conversation with her uh, specifically about how she's doing, not uh, on the specifics of the learning, not just anecdotally on what I may or may not hear from her um, and how she's doing. Uh, I can even see here where she used the read and tell app um, or show and tell app, not read and tell, show and tell app, um, and she uploaded a, a sample of her math work. Once upon a time, there, there were puppies. And how many puppies there were was one, two, three, four, five puppies and then three kitties come to lawn and and then kitties and then three kitties come to lawn and all together makes one two three four five six seven eight once upon a time. So uh, I love her little at the end there. She's so proud of the learning that she's doing um, and that this is being uploaded to her fresh grade portfolio. Um, now this is stuff that she can work on. Um, she can upload herself um, right there in the classroom and in the busy, noisy classroom. You heard all that classroom noise going on in the background. Uh, she just has an iPad and she's sitting at her desk and she's doing her work and uploading it to her portfolio. And I, as the parent, get an instant um, notification of exactly what's going on. So super simple. Um, your time is, is super important. Um, so you'll notice that with fresh grade, you're going to save so much time um, on that stack of papers, um, no longer being something that um, is, is taking over your, uh, your day. Um, and uh, and we support you uh, through professional learning um, where you can come in and we'll teach you exactly how to use FreshGrade really simply in just quick little videos, kind of like we're doing today. Um, and, and that's kind of the end of my presentation. Um, we can take a few minutes here to answer um, any questions you guys have um, or um, uh, I'm just pull up our questions panel. I lost it while I was talking to you all um, or show you anything that I didn't show you. If you want to see something else, just let me know. Um, I'd be happy to um, do that for you. Well, and, and real quickly, Siobhan, if I can yeah. step in. So this was actually originally intended to be a New York uh, presentation because we actually were very fortunate to win an RFP 
um, in New York for, they call them the BOCES in New York for the folks that are outside of New York, but basically they're educational units. And so we're now a preferred vendor for anybody in New York. And um, so I'd love to talk with anybody in New York because, you know, obviously we have some special uh, pricing and such for, for folks in New York. But anybody outside, we are looking for a model schools. And so I'd love to chat with anybody about uh, joining us as a model school. And what that means actually is we're happy to give it away free to you. Um, for a period of time. So um, I will be contacting everybody who's joined us on this webinar and uh, seeing if we can help you out. It's super exciting to be a model school for fresh grade um, and getting it free for your um, teachers to use. Um, it's a super, look at that. Uh, there we go. One person stepping forward, Daryl, who would love to, to join in and be um, one of our model schools um, and get this amazing platform free for your teachers um, and yourself to use with those data and that insight um, as the, the school leader to see exactly what's going on um, in in your school and being able to connect with your teachers on a different level because um, as an administrator uh, how do you have time to visit all the classrooms imagine now it's on your device and you can actually see what's going on in in your schools um, as a as a administrator or as principal um, exactly seeing what's going on with your social emotional learning efforts maybe you want to see how the students in the school are performing on a specific competency. You can see that across your entire school. So super um, exciting. We would love to talk with you guys more um, about that. I do want to thank STAR um, for joining us on this presentation. We are over on time and I'm amazed that you guys have all stayed here um, and listened to us uh, ramble on for the last 50 minutes, not just 45, but 50 minutes. Um, so thanks so much for joining us. This recording will be um, um, available to you um, and will be in touch soon. Um, I'm sure Daryl will be reaching out to you all very shortly. So watch your inbox for that very important email about the model school um, opportunity so that you guys can sign up today and get your teachers or yourself as a teacher share it with your principal um, and get your school started. So thank you guys so much for joining us um, and hopefully we'll see you guys in fresh grade soon as one of the model schools. All right. Bye, everybody. All right.